Hi, what do shallow depth of field, a 30 band graphic equalizer and Saturn's moon Dione have in common? They all allow your subject to shine. Let's get into it. Say you're in your photo studio, taking a portrait or really photographing anything in your studio. You control the background, you control the lighting, you kind of control everything. Um, you might as well shoot that at F8. Uh, there's no reason to have the iris in focus and the tip of the nose out of focus or to have the iris in focus and the, the back of the hair out of focus. Let's have the whole person or whatever you're photographing in focus in your portrait studio and they will look great because you have your nice seamless paper or your carefully painted portrait background. Um, might be a little sterile because it's removed from the world, but it's, it's clean and it should be sharp. Uh, but you, then you leave the studio. You put on your photojournalism hat or your street photography hat or you go do a social documentary project. And now instead of controlling kind of everything, you control almost nothing. Um, you still control your camera settings, of course, uh, but you can no longer tell the people where to be. It's not practical and it, it's probably unethical. Um, you, if, if time permits, you might have the ability to move yourself and your camera to adjust the angle on the people you're photographing, uh, adjust the lighting, adjust the background. Uh, but in many cases, the background will be very busy everywhere. And in many cases, things happen really fast. It may be only, uh, you know, uh, an angry gesture or a loving embrace or whatever it might be for a second or two. And so you may not have time to move all the way over here. Maybe you just have to try to get the thing in focus and, and capture this moment if you can. Um, for these kinds of situations, shallow depth of field is a huge help. Uh, we leave the portrait studio and go into the world to take pictures of people living, working, uh, expressing their identity and, you know, creating culture and interacting with other people in the world. So we don't want sterile backgrounds. We want to know that we're in a rural area or a city or wherever we might be. But in many cases, there's so much going on in the background, trees, power lines, cars, people, buildings. It's a mess, and if you shoot that at F8 and everything's sharp, um, it really makes it difficult to focus on the subject. It becomes more snapshot-ish and, and really take something out of that photo. So you shoot maybe at F2, it depends obviously on your situation, but uh, you know, closer to wide open, shallow depth of field, and we soften that background. So we still know where we are, we have a sense of place, but it's softened enough to let us focus on the subject. Interestingly, there's kind of a parallel in audio recording. If you just record a singer-songwriter, a vocal and a guitar, that's a little bit like the portrait studio where everything's nicely controlled. But then you say, oh, well, but I want a richer sound. I want to bring in a bunch of instruments to have this fuller, deeper sound. Well, that's great, but now all those instruments adding all that you know, depth and, and resonance to your recording are also crowding out your vocalist that we really want to be able to hear. So if you take a 30 band graphic equalizer and, you know, pick a, a particular frequency a space where that vocalist lives, maybe 2K or whatever it might be, um, and notch those instruments, you can create a little space for your vocalist to live in. Um, if you only used had bass and treble knobs or if you had an equalizer with just a few bands and you tried to do that, you would just take the heart and soul out of the instruments. But with your 30 band equalizer, you can be very notchy about it, create a little opening for your vocalist to shine through in without degrading the other instruments. Interestingly enough, um, when the Voyager spacecraft encountered Saturn, uh, the flight team wanted to get as close to the planet as possible. They wanted to really explore the rings. And so they decided to fly through the rings, um, which are made of, you know, ice and rock and would almost certainly destroy the spacecraft. Uh, but fortunately enough, the small moon Dione uh, is very near the planet and in the plane of the rings. And it actually sweeps out a little space into the rings, which is known as the Dione clear zone. So Voyager was able to fly through the Dione clear zone and actually go through the plane of the rings and create, you know, incredible photographs and gather all kinds of data. Um, so when you're trying to photograph 
people doing things in the world or recording, uh, you know, a great musical track or encountering a planetary gas giant in your solar system, finding a clear space for that human action or that vocal performance or your spacecraft to inhabit can really make a difference. Can you overdo it? Yes, you can. Um, if instead of tiny moon Dione, if we stuck Jupiter there, well, it would just obliterate everything. There would be no rings at all. And again, if you didn't have a 30 band graphic equalizer, if you just had a few bands or bass and treble knobs or something like that, and you tried to mute part of your instruments, you would just take the heart and soul out of the instruments. It would really be a disappointing experience. Uh, with photography, if you so blur the background, if you get your Nikon knocked F0.95 and just obliterate the background, um, now we aren't in the world anymore. Now you've essentially reproduced the, that portrait studio. We don't feel that we're in the city or the country or uh, in traffic or on a university campus or wherever we might be. So we want to be in the world. We want to see the world, but it needs to be soft enough to let the subject shine and then let us see the background. So um, F2 might work for you. Obviously, the, the specifics of your situation, the focal length, how close you are to the subject and so on are going to make a difference. But try working with background and see if you can find a way to isolate your subject. Happy photo shooting.